GreenHustles.com. Cousin Lewis. Cousin Lewis was born in Michigan in 1972. At the age of 18, he was arrested and convicted of possession with intent to distribute cocaine. He served a three-year sentence. While in prison, BMF Black Mafia family took control of the cocaine trade in Detroit and several other states. So upon his release, he decided to dominate Motor City's marijuana market, and he did. Cousin's first cousin, Robert Trailer, earned a full athletic scholarship. Robert became a star basketball player at the University of Michigan. He was an NBA lottery pick in 1998, and he went to the NBA. Cousin Lewis and Robert Trailer, two players, but different games. Robert began buying real estate with Cousin's money to help him launder it. He was making $2 million a year, so everyone would think that he paid for it. Cousin wasn't the only marijuana kingpin. Tommy Hodges was the other. They knew each other from the streets. They had a meeting and both decided to start a partnership. Tommy already had a trucking company with a fleet of tractor trailer drivers. Together, they cornered the market, transporting high quantities of marijuana. The operation worked like this. The trucks were delivered to the warehouses, then the weed would be unloaded into the vans. Within an hour, the vans would be delivered and unloaded at several distribution sites. The two kingpins carried themselves totally different. Tommy Hodges was flamboyant. He had a fleet of luxury cars and a yacht, and he lived in a glamorous mansion and he was real flashy he dressed in leather draped with different color furs and expensive jewelry we saw Lewis dressed like a businessman but he had several houses he didn't stay at one house long he would rotate between different houses the partnership was successful but Cousin felt like Tommy was shorting him on the bread and the weed so the partnership ended abruptly and the two campaigns went to war. The war turned the streets of Detroit bloody, and in an 18-month period, there were four house fire bombings and 15 homicides. Tommy Rubber was even killed in a drive-by shooting. Both kingpins sent their top enforcers to kill each other. Tommy and his girlfriend was in his Mercedes in a parking lot of Tiffany's nightclub when Cousin's muscle ambushed him. Lamont Paris and Rashid Harris right across the street from a police station, drove by shooting and riddled his Mercedes with bullet holes. Neither Tommy or his girlfriend was hit, but an employee of Tiffany's was shot in the eye. The police caught the assailants after a short car chase. At the time of the arrest, Paris and Harris had on bulletproof vests, had two semi-automatic rifles and two magazines of ammo. Paris and Harris kept their mouths shut. Neither one of them cooperated with the authorities. They were charged and convicted with intent to commit murder. They each got five years for the felony of a possession of a firearm, four years for the body armor, two years for the possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony, four years for the discharge of a weapon at a building, etc. The guilty verdict gave both of them 75 years apiece. The Lewis Hodges war continued. There was retaliation after retaliation, but both kingpins managed to survive every murder attempt. The feds got information and location of Tommy Hodges' residence from, from some snitches. The FBI executed the search warrant of Tommy's $1.1 million mansion. When the feds breached the door, agents observed Tommy throwing garbage bags full of money on the roof which contained 300000 in cash. Tommy ended up pleading guilty and got 13 years for marijuana trafficking and money laundering. And since Tommy Hodges was locked up, the war came to an end. Cousin was the last man standing and is crowned the king. You already know, heavy is the head that wears the crown. So he stepped his game up. He cut out the middle man altogether and he got a supply from Israeli Corral of the Mexican cartel. Well, this is how his operation worked. Cousin's girlfriend, Sissy Walker, was second in command, and her brother, Eddie Walker, was his top distributor. Robert Wilson was Eddie's right-hand man. He collected the money and secured the warehouses. 
Levert Vito Daphne was Crusan's driver and enforcer. And that Sanchez was his courier. Giovanni Renova, he would oversee the drug shipments from Mexico to Detroit. The feds finally caught an unexpected break from a dope fiend woman who called 911 who said a body was in the hotel suite. Novi police searched the room. They didn't find a body, but they did find $3.4 million in several duffel bags and garbage bags full of marijuana. They also found some ledges. The ledges led the feds to a nearby house in Northville. They arrested two men carrying duffel bags containing $1 million. They agreed to cooperate with the feds. Now the FBI opened a major investigation called Operation Fallen Star. The ledges has time to the deliveries and Crusoe and Eddie Gavani's name and their phone numbers. The feds got warned for the wise on every phone. May 2004, Oklahoma police stopped the car and seized $1.7 million in duffel bags. The feds, over an 18-month period, did searches and confiscated more than $5 million in cash and a million dollars worth of marijuana. August 2004, Ohio police stopped another shipment of $1.4 million. With each seizure, the feds was disrupting Crusan's operation and he wasn't happy. The feds, they started raiding the warehouses. They confiscated 400 pounds of marijuana and a tractor trailer containing 2,200 pounds of marijuana. Through the wire, the feds also heard chaos within the ranks of the Crusan organization. Eddie Walker began worrying about the feds, so Eddie tried to buy some weed and sell it himself, trying to distance himself from Crusan's operation. Word got back to Crusan, but he didn't want to kill him because that was his girlfriend's brother. So he decided to send him a message. March 9th, 2005. Eddie's right-hand man, Robert Wilson, was outside his house in his car when two assailants sprayed his car with an AK-47 assault rifle. And he was shot several times, but survived. The feds heard on the wire a conversation between Eddie and Robert about the night he got shot. Robert blamed Vito Daphne, who saw his enforcer, for the hit. He told Eddie Vito was the only one who knew where he lived at. The feds was able to indict 22 co-conspirators. Poussin was arrested trying to board an airplane at Cleveland's Hawkins International Airport in July 2005. Vito Daphne was arrested at Cedar Point Amusement Park in Sandusky, Ohio. During the raid of Vito's Canton, Michigan house, the DEA agents discovered an arsenal of weapons, electric cash counting machines, and more ledgers. Cousin, Eddie, Robert, Vito, and Sissy, and the 22 others was all indicted together. Israeli, Giovanni, and Annette got away, but there was not one of them in Cousin's organization that cooperated with the authorities. They all plead guilty in a plea deal. They all had to forfeit all the money, property, and expensive vehicles. The feds also put a money laundering charge on Cousin's cousin, Robert Trailer. He was facing 14 years. He admitted to the charge, so he ended up getting three years probation. He was no longer in the NBA. He was playing in Puerto Rico. He later died overseas of a heart attack. Cousin Lewis was sentenced to 18 years. Sissy got 12 years, Vito got 10 years, Eddie got 6 years. Annette Sanchez was finally caught in 2017. And after 12 years on the run, Israeli Corral and Giovanni Renova are still considered fugitives of the law. During Cousin's trial, the judge asked him, do you have anything to say? Cousin said, the prosecutor's been fair, the FBI's been fair. Judge, you've been fair, and I love my lawyer. I'm just ready to do my time. The forfeited money from the federal forfeiture program was shared by 12 police agencies. It totaled over $19 million. Man, once them feds throw that indictment on you, it's over. They have a 90% conviction rate. So you already know, you hit with that RICO, they repo that vehicle. Damn, it was all good just a week ago. Street campaigns.
doesn't condone drug dealing, crime, or violence. This lifestyle usually ends with prison or death. You can love the streets. Just remember, the streets don't love you back. Like, subscribe, and comment. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Thanks for watching. Peace.